Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In my today's video I will be showing you how to set up and download first of all the virtual box and set up the virtual machine. Why am I doing this? First of all it's for people who just want to set up a free virtual machine as a Linux virtual machine on their computer. By the way if you have the Windows 10 license of course you can set up a Windows 10 machine with virtual box as well. And second it's for people who are preparing for IT examinations who are who want to get uh, a job in their IT or just the people who want to explore Linux more but they have Windows machine. This video is for them. So first of all, when I was preparing for my IT examinations, I didn't know about this app and I passed all of the three CompTIA trifecta exams, A+, Network+, and Security+, without knowing about it. So of course, without it, you can pass it. But later, when I started working as an IT engineer, I started using it and I started exploring Linux way more than I did. This uh, virtual machine is absolutely amazing because whenever you're preparing for the exam or whenever you're in IT and just heard for the first time about the virtual machine, you're like, oh, what a cool thing and etc. But you don't really have the courage to start trying it out or you don't maybe expect that it's free. Yes, uh, maybe uh, many virtual machines are not free. And in fact, for example, at my job, we have the virtual machine provider that is not free, but uh, virtual box uh, provided by Oracle is completely free and you can start using it right away to practice some Linux or to prepare for your IT exams or cybersecurity exams. So it's very, very important tool that you should be aware of and you should practice if you want to have more skills and if you want your life to become more interesting. So let's get started. So first of all, guys, in order to create a virtual machine, we have to download the VirtualBox software, um, which will allow us to create and ma manage our virtual machines. To do that, you're gonna, gonna just um, Google the VirtualBox download. Uh, my, the laptop that I currently use is Mac, so I'm downloading the VirtualBox for Mac. And you right go to the downloads. The virtual box is offered by Oracle, and this is a, a free software. Before you download, you can go straightly to downloading the virtual box, which what I did. But if you're more advanced, and maybe if you're preparing for the Security Plus or want to test it, you can test the uh, SHA-256 checksums and MD5 checksums of your download, just to be sure that your download haven't been tampered with and that it's original. So we're currently in, on the downloads page and there are two types of virtual boxes that you have to uh, you can download. The one is one uh, the previous uh, version which is uh, for um 32 bit hosts. Uh, so basically you have to find out what type of host uh, what type of prof processor you have. And um, I have a 64-bit processor, uh, which I can see uh, from the definition or from uh, the about this my, my Mac uh, part. I, because I have a basic knowledge of uh, what 64 and 32-bit uh, laptops or systems, I'm sorry, look like, I can say that my Mac is 64-bit. But... If you want to uh, be sure, especially if you're using a bit old laptop, Windows laptop, I uh, advise you to go to the My PC or System Information section and look for this 32-bit or 62-bit string that would show you if your computer is 32-bit or 64-bit. So my computer is 64-bit, so I'm going ahead to download VirtualBox 6. I'll go ahead and download OS X because it's for my Mac, but you can go ahead and download the one that is uh, for your operating system, whether you use Linux, these are the Linux distributions. As you know, the Linux is open source uh, operating systems and that's why many um, developers customize Linux and these different customizations of Linux are called distributions of Linux. So that's why if you use Linux, you can choose your distribution or go ahead for Windows. 
as you see for my mac i downloaded is a dot dmg format you see and this is the format that is used on mac to uh, install the software i already have a virtual box software on my laptop so i'm gonna wait till you install the virtual box on your laptop and from that moment i'll restart the video again so that we can uh, go ahead and create our vir first virtual machine as you see, just to practice some penetration tests and etc, I already have two Linux machines installed, but with you today, I will be installing another um, Linux distribution on the virtual box. Why I choose Linux? Because the Linux is open source so that I can download and install it for free. But if you have the Windows license, you can go ahead and install Windows as well. If I go ahead and make this full screen and click on new, you can see that the machines, not the machines, but the uh, hard drives of the machines will be saved on, on this location on my laptop. Um, there I have to choose the type. Uh, today I will be installing the basic Linux Ubuntu distribution. So that's why I'm choosing Linux today. And I can choose whatever I want depending on the distribution that I will be installing. Today I will be installing Ubuntu 64-bit because this is one of the most practical um, Linux distributions. But to be honest, I like to, um, I, I myself like to practice with some other Linux distributions. So for example, I really like Mint that you can see here, and that's why uh, I would uh, you can go ahead with the distribution that you really like. But on this tutorial, we're going ahead with Ubuntu 64 bit. It's a name, I'm gonna name it um, Test uh, Ubuntu, and go ahead and click continue. So this is a very important moment here, uh, and this is the amount of RAM that you're gonna allocate to your computer. Um, RAM, uh, as you may, may know or not, uh, this is a random access memory and this is a memory um, that is your computer, your virtual machine is going to use in order to do some uh, processing stuff um, and to operate basically. So this is a dynamic allocation and what does it mean? So if I go ahead and allocate like uh, 25,641 uh, megabyte, this doesn't mean that it will be eaten all at once it will be taken for all at once from my um, main laptop but rather if needed this uh, figure will go up to that figure right uh, but if not needed it will be operating on the lower stances uh, by the way, uh, always take into consideration the abilities of your own uh, laptop on which you're creating the virtual machine. Please, please don't overdo it if your uh, laptop is not strong, let's say, does not have strong processing power. So the optimal one is somewhere in the middle or, or closer to the beginning, I would say. Definitely not 4 megabytes, but I think 10, 10 gig is perfectly well. But again, if uh, you feel that lo your laptop is not that strong please don't go ahead and put a lot of lots of gigabytes for ram because anyway if you're gonna do some basic tests or use the terminal on the virtual machine you don't really need to too much ram you know so we set our ram and let's go ahead and create a virtual and decide on our memory so the recommended uh, size of the hard disk is 10 GB and the recommended size for the um, hard drive that I can recommend you is definitely not 10 GB because whenever you download some a few programs on your virtual machine your 10 GB are full and then you start um, installing the G-parted utility on Linux to uh, increase the partition. So it's not really practical and i tell you why a bit later. For this machine, I'm going to go ahead and create a new virtual hard disk. If you want to use a virtual hard disk of a previous uh, virtual machine that you had with VirtualBox, you can either use an existing virtual hard disk. For example, if I go ahead, I can see, you can see that I have three other hard disks and and, um, or I can create a virtual hard disk for this machine. That's what I'm gonna do for um, this test. Um, I normally use the VHD virtual hard disk. Whatever you're comfortable with, you can go with something else in your case if you feel more comfortable and more knowledgeable about a uh, virtual box disk image. You can go for go uh, ahead for that. So for that test, I'm choosing virtual hard disk. This is a very important part of 
um, allocation of the storage for the virtual box. So let's imagine that I want to allocate 20 gig and my laptop has around 100 gig, just a hypothetical example. And that's like uh, one fifth of my memory. But the memory is dynamically allocated, unless we choose otherwise, unless we go for fixed size. What does it mean? These gigabytes will be uh, consumed whenever they are needed. So the virtual machine will not be taking the 20 gigabytes of your memory at once. No, um, it will keep the other unused gigabytes free for your uh, main laptop or other virtual machines to use because it's dynamically allocated memory. So it means that it will be dynamically allocated to your virtual machine up to the limit that you set and it's not fixed and it will not be booked pre-booked in advance the storage will not be pre-booked in advance uh, on your main machine if you have a bit more memory if you do a few te if you want to do a few tests of course set it for around uh, 90 gigabytes my macbook so it has lots of memory lots of storage so i usually put it on 100 gig just in case my machine needs more storage, I don't have to increase it afterwards. That's why I'm gonna save my time and put it on 100 GB. But if you're just using it for this test specifically, put it on 10, 15 or 20 GB. There is no need for anything more. So our virtual machine is created. And if we go ahead and start the virtual machine, um, we won't see the Linux virtual machine, right? We can only see the Linux server. So we will, whenever we go ahead, we'll only have a terminal and that's it, nothing else. In order to have a virtual machine with desktop, uh, with a proper Linux um, a graphical unit, uh, unit interface, we have to install Linux OS to start with, right? Before that, we're gonna clear the network settings. So my laptop is currently connected to Wi-Fi. So um, I'm gonna set the bridge adapter, which is very easy option so that there is no NAT allocation and your uh, virtual machine will have its own um, dynamically allocated or statically allocated unless you set uh, otherwise the IP address. And I'm on Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it on Wi-Fi and click OK. Next, what I, I am gonna do, I'm gonna open my browser and go for, so what we're installing today. We're installing Linux Ubuntu 64-bit. Um, if you remember correctly from your certification preparation or anything else, your image um, extension is ISO. So we're gonna look for that and download, uh, I'm sorry, download this ISO file so that we can mount it on our virtual machine. Download, you can see the community projects, subscribe now, no, thank you. Uh, so here you can see the minimal requirements for the Linux virtual, uh, not virtual machine, but Linux overall. So you have to have 4 GB of memory to at least 25 GB free of hard drive space. That's why I recommend you to set more than 10 uh, GB for your hard disk, internet access. And of course, if it's our virtual machine, it's um, DVD and etc. It's not that important. Um, another important uh, thing about our virtual machine is that uh, it actually, although you don't see it, has CD, DVD and flash drive uh, input and output access because you cannot, it's a virtual machine, right? So you can set it up virtually. Virtually your machine can have CD, DVD or whatever you can think of and that will be using the CD uh, drive to mount our uh, operating system file. So our virtual machine will think like it's on the disk and we inserted it into it, but it's virtual machine, right? And it's all virtual. So my download is still in progress. I'm gonna start restart the video uh, whenever my download is complete. Guys, my operating system has been downloaded as you see. So we can go ahead and mount it and uh, install the Linux operating system onto our virtual machine. First of all, we're gonna go for, let me see, yeah, for the storage uh, tab on our settings and in the storage tab, as you can see, our optical drive is empty. We have to click, click here on the disk icon 
choose or create a virtual optical disk. Here we have to add a virtual disk that we have just downloaded. Uh, as you can see, I've downloaded uh, to it today. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK and choose this one. Yeah, so I chose this disk and clicking OK. And now this optical drive is mounted onto our um, virtual machine. Then I'm going to go ahead and start uh, my virtual machine. Let me bring the window that has been opened to this monitor. And as you can see, it's picking up the ISO that we have downloaded and Ubuntu is being installed. So in, on some of you, although not all of you, the, you can experience this problem. Whenever you try to open the uh, virtual machine window full uh, as a full screen window, you don't see the virtual machine because it wouldn't stretch. You have this problem, you know, you have these white spaces and it means that the virtual machine doesn't stretch any more than this uh, scaling. In order to fix that, uh, on Mac you have it on the top, on Windows you might have it on the top as well, but it might be in a slightly different locations, but normally it's almost the same. So you're gonna go to um, Devices and you're gonna go to uh, Insert Guest Editions CD Image. Unable to insert, okay, maybe it's unable because we haven't uh, installed it yet. Okay, then let's go ahead and install it in, in this for, uh, for now in this scaling. I'm going for English and I'm going to install Ubuntu. English, we have to define our keyboard layout and I'm continuing with the English US layout. It's not that principally important at the moment. It already has the date and the time of my local time zone where I am living currently. And now we're waiting. Okay, uh, what apps would you like to install to start with? Um, I'm gonna go with normal installation. If you want to do a very quick tests on your VM and you know that you will delete it very um, promptly after the test, you can go ahead and do minimal installation. But normally I always go with normal installation. Okay, uh, this computer currently has no detected operating systems. What would you like to do? Well, it's asking it because if we created the virtual machine. It was without any operating systems. It was brand new, let's say, purely clean. And it has no detected operating system. So sometimes people, um, why it's asking this question? Because this question can be a bit, um, uh, maybe difficult from the first side for you to understand. Some people buy Dell laptops or any other types of laptops with Windows virtual machine mounted on it and then afterwards they reinstall Linux on it by uh, deleting um, a Windows machine that is currently on the Dell, this Dell laptop. Uh, but in our case, it was very clean virtual machine with no previous operating system. So we're going, uh, we're going to go ahead, erase disk and install Ubuntu and click on install now button. If uh, you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disks. Uh, otherwise, you will be able to make further changes manually. Okay, let's continue. Let's go ahead and, cl and choose the closest big city to me. And click continue. Your name, Jama, virtual box, choose a password. Um, login automatically. I'm not gonna set up password. Okay. It seems like I have to set up password. Let it be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's continue. Welcome to Ubuntu. It's copying files. Um, 
while it's almost over and it's installing the operating system just to let you know normally it's very fast your virtual machine turns up very fast uh, but because we're currently installing the OS and it's it's a bit longer process it takes a bit long to install the virtual machine let's go ahead and make a copy with me So guys, as you see, our installation is complete now. So we're going to go ahead and restart our virtual machine. After the restart, our virtual machine is ready to use. So here you can see the basic virtual machine with terminal, with browser and with uh, lots of other settings that can be new to you if you're using uh, Windows but it's very interesting and very nice. So I really advise you to go ahead and starting, uh, start using it as um, much as you can to test it and to do something. And thank you for being with me during this tutorial. So guys, that was it for the setting up the virtual box and Linux virtual machine on your laptop. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and push that like button for this channel. Please share your thoughts and your impressions in the comment section down below. And of course, thank you all who supported my channel via PayPal. Uh, thank you for your donations. And I'm really grateful for, for all of you, for all of those who follow my channel. Thanks very much again and have a nice day, guys. Bye!